Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gaijin Gaiden. And this time I wanted to talk about basically a little bit about home decor. Now of course uh, when a lot of us move here to Japan usually um, we arrive and we're provided with uh, housing uh, in an apartment almost usually, most usually, uh, by whoever it is that we work for. Now um, <clears throat> exactly the quality and size and things like this all vary a little bit but I wanted to talk a little bit about just sort of what you can do to sort of make your place a little bit more your own you know and it really is amazing just how little things can really sort of enhance a place and make it your own when I was when I was young um, I didn't really get the idea of uh, posters um, I, I literally did not own any basically no posters as a kid. It wasn't until college that I actually like bought posters and hung them up in my dorm room. I just, as a kid, I just didn't really understand the point of them. But I got sort of sick and tired of staring at these like really plain white walls in my college dorm room, and they were kind of disappointing. So I decided to drop a few bucks and pick up some posters uh, on campus, and. Um, one of the first ones I got was actually a copy of uh, a cheap copy of uh, "In the Well of the Great Wave" off of Kanagawa uh, by Hokusai, the famous you know painting, Japanese painting of uh, the, the big wave. And I put those up, and I was really amazed at just how much it did to really enhance the place, and make it feel like you know it was part of me. Uh, I don't know why I never really understood that when I was younger. Uh, just kind of one of those things. But anyway, uh, getting into it, um, as I said, what you're kind of what you can do, you're a little bit limited, of course, with what you can bring with you from home. Uh, you're going to, of course, have to keep it to small things. But again, it's the little things that count. Um, I don't. I suppose this doesn't really count as decor. But for me, one thing that I brought was uh, this coaster. And uh, it's actually for uh, Interlaken in Switzerland, which is a place I've never been. I've never set foot in Europe. I actually got this at a um, Goodwill store in Illinois, where I used to li literally like right by where I used to live. And it's just I brought it because this, for the, for the better part of uh, a year, more than a year or so, was my coaster. I used this thing every day when I was sitting at my computer doing whatever, work, playing games, whatever, my drink was always sitting on this. And it was, you know, a tiny little thing. I knew I wouldn't have any trouble getting it here. Um, so just being able to have that again did a lot to really make my new apartment feel like home. Um, two other little things that I brought with me um, were these. The Funko Pop figures. Uh, actually, I brought four of them. The other two are um, the male Soul Survivor from Fallout 4 and uh, Luna Lovegood, my favorite Harry Potter character. But uh, as you can tell, I'm kind of a big comic book fan. So, and my favorite comic book character is Superman. So uh, I couldn't resist bringing Superman with me. And I've uh, I've been a fan of Doctor Who since I was about 14 years old. My favorite doctor is, unsurprisingly, the fourth doctor. And uh, this particular one was uh, a Barnes & Noble exclusive. Uh, and uh, I actually had worked at a Barnes & Noble before. So I picked it up there. And it just kind of, and it was actually, um, well, it didn't pay great. But I really liked the people that I worked with. So I had good memories of that job. So this kind of was there to remind me of Doctor Who. And, you know, a place that I had a job where I was that I enjoyed. But again, you're, you're pretty limited in uh, bringing things like that. Uh, me, I came here with uh, basically just a suitcase and a backpack, so uh, personal things like that I really had to uh, go light on. Now, of course, you know, when, once you're actually here in Japan, you have a great deal more freedom. Um, you can buy stuff off of Amazon Japan. There's numerous shops where you can buy you know, various things to your taste. But again, you're probably living in an apartment that doesn't belong to you. And depending on your job, you might, how long you stay there is, you know, can, can, can be a little unclear. 
um, you're probably not going to have a, the option to really sort of make any really extensive customization to your place. S but again, plain walls are pretty boring, so what can you do? Well, again, this all really great, varies greatly on your tastes, and of course, um, as always with apartment living, you if you want to hang things up, you want to be careful about it because, you know, if you damage the walls, you're going to pay for that later. So um, for things like this that I happen to have, and I talked about these uh, in my Marvel video. In fact, I uh, showed you, I guess I showed you guys this. Uh, this is a thing I bought at the Marvel uh, Heroes exhibit in Fukuoka. It was a little museum exhibition about Marvel stuff here in Japan. And yeah, just Spider-Man checking out the moon and these cherry blossoms. Uh, I mean, it's it's gorgeous. And this thing only cost me like ten bucks. It's like, oh my god, this is so great. Um, so uh, these are called tenugui, which basically, uh, I believe I mentioned this in my other video, translates as hand towels, which I guess in olden times this is what hand towels in Japan looked like. Um, nowadays they're just more kind of like art uh, on them, and I, the name for whatever reason just never changed. And you can find variations like this quite a few places, um, and they're usually quite inexpensive. And, uh, yeah, you know, I would say they're a really nice way to sort of spice up your apartment uh, or so. Uh, one other thing you can do, um, you might, yeah, you probably can't see it that well, but behind me, uh, I actually have a map of Japan uh, in English that I bought at a bookstore here. And that was a little bit pricey. That was like $23. But, um, and, and that's that's held up there with nothing, with a couple of tacks and some tape. But, you know, uh, a, a nice map of Japan in English, a uh, quite handy thing to have. And I, I love geography, so things like maps, uh, I really enjoy decorating my home with those. Uh, <clears throat> uh, another easy thing to do is just good old-fashioned uh, little cups and whatnot. Again, this is a, a thing that's kind of indicative of my personality is that I like to use... Um, cups as sort of shelf decoration. Um, my uh, old apartment, I live by both uh, uh, ReStore, the Habitat for Humanity store, and a Goodwill. And I would always be sticking my head in there looking around. I mean, I would go to these places two, three times a week just trying to find interesting things. And I found all these coffee mugs and stuff that uh, people had bought on various vacations around the world. And I ended up with quite the interesting little collection of them. Um, I think the most interesting one was some sort of cup that belonged to like the the out the the flying doctors of the Australian outback or something like this. I mean, you know, God only knows how it got from somewhere in the Australian outback to uh, central Illinois, but uh, it did, and I managed to snag it for a dollar. That's got put in storage back in the back in the states before I left here. But um, I also found this really interesting mug that was like from. West Germany, you know, back when there was still such a place as West Germany. And I mean, I found stuff from like Sweden and uh, all kinds of other stuff. Um, this, of course, um, this basically, I bought this at Daiso, which is basically a dollar store uh, for basically a little over a dollar. Uh, it's just sort of a nice looking teacup. And the nice thing about cups is that you can use them for you know, of course, drinking and stuff. But you can, like, like I have one cup that I used to put my change in. You can put pens in it. You can put various, your various knickknacks around there. So, you know, the, the, so, if, uh, so they're cheap and easy ways to decorate. Um, another thing that I have uh, are these. There was a one-piece event around here during the summer, and uh, I, I, I'm a big, big one-piece fan. So I could not resist swinging by and picking up a couple of these. These were, oh gee, um, like 600 yen each. So they're really, they're quite affordable. And uh, if you're a One Piece fan, like something like this is a really great thing to have. I haven't actually hung these up, even though I've had them for like the better part of five months. Um, and that's simply just because it's the question of like how nerdy do I want my place to be? I mean, I like the Spider-Man thing is probably about as far as I want to take it. I don't really hide the fact that I'm a nerdy person, but you don't want to really just sort of have that be. I think the theme to your home. 
Um, there was a guy I heard a, on a podcast years ago. He said, it's really not so much about what it is that you're into that you use to decorate your home. It's really more the quantity of it all. Like, um, you know, for example, he, he used the analogy, like, if you're into the New York Rangers, that's great. And if you have like a couple of posters and some, you know, memorabilia up around in your home, then nobody's going to think anything weird of you. But on the other hand, if you go into your home, your home, somebody's house, and like everything in their ha in their home is like New York Rangers themed, you're going to wonder if they're, you know, not a couple of sandwiches short of a picnic. And it's the same thing with anime and comic books and or you know any other nerdy thing or anything in general. You kind of want to keep it keep it balanced and um, of course here in Japan um, sort of like otaku stuff has a somewhat more negative reputation than it does in the US so I kinda wanna keep that sort of played down uh, especially in, in my home so the the one piece things have just been kinda put away off to the side uh, while I sort of still mull over exactly what I eventually want to do with them so at the end of the day, um, oh yeah, and uh, one thing you'll learn here pretty quickly is that, especially around the new year, uh, just like back in the States, uh, companies love to give out free calendars. I ended up with like four or five calendars given to me like within a couple of, like within like two weeks after I got here, which was like right before the new year. And uh, I stuck a, let me see, I stuck up one of them in my kitchen just because, you know, big calendar is handy and uh, I have another one it's actually a really really small one with uh, nature shots of Indiana uh, that I brought with me simply because uh, you know having an American calendar was handy and also it had you know photographs from my home state which I figured uh, might come in handy at some point so I guess that's it for me and my my home decorating tips uh, it, a lot of it, uh, just like anywhere, comes down to your own tastes and your own creativity. But I do really think that it is worth taking the time to and dropping the money to to get a few things that really do make your uh, your apartment feel like home. Now, this is especially important for me because I'm kind of a homebody. My favorite place to relax is my home. If you're one of those people that it's like your home is just like where you come to sleep and like you're never there, then you know maybe this isn't such a big deal. But it is worth thinking about, and it's definitely worth taking the time to make your place feel like an extension of you, regardless of however long you're gonna be here in Japan. Anyway guys, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Of course, you can join me on Twitter, at Gaijin Gaiden. Until next time, take care and have a good one.